Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our Appium series, we are looking into the different types of gestures. In our previous session, we have seen how you can do the drag and drop in Android, right? By using the W3C actions and also by using the Appium gesture plugin also. So today we are taking it further and then we are implementing the same concept for the iOS as well. Okay, so now let's see that what are the different things we can do with iOS and I in our previous session I have taken only one of this particular what do you call element and then I match it right so today we will see a little bit different because the same concept right so what exactly we are going to learn today so what i'm trying differently is that i will be taking this entire what you call this shoe the complete scenario where i will be picking it up each of these elements in a different way and then i will be making this robot as a uh, i mean solving this puzzle i can say in that way okay fine now for this as simple as that i have taken a kind of if you see this particular uh, class right i've taken ios underscore drag and drop i have put all the options and then here i'm launching the same options and then i'm clicking on the drag now for this particular application wdio application i'm clicking on this drag and sticking into this screen from here onwards we will see how we can implement now just to quickly recap uh, we have actually two different methods that we have uh, uh, made or two different ways actually but both are doing the same uh, actions only drag and drop which accepts the source and target drag and drop with respect to the gesture which also accepts the two different elements the source and target and it just does the drag and drop now at this moment our point is to take these elements identify these elements and then pass it one by one into this particular method any one of these methods that's what we have done into the android one as well right you can see source and destination we have taken and then we are calling this particular method so the same concept we will use for iOS as well okay so for this I will be opening the Appium inspector to inspect these elements so these are the draggable elements these are the drop zone elements you can see there are nine drag zones are there or draggable elements and here you can see the nine positions are there where I need to take and put it into this target so let me quickly open my Appium inspector so this is actually your iOS uh, WDIO applications, the details which will launch the simulator into this Appium inspected view. Now for this, I will be quickly opening the Appium server. I'm running that so that this particular inspector can be activated. So let's see. Okay, I got the Appium server running and I'm doing a start session okay so i'm going into the drag options and i'm refreshing this screen and here you can see accessibility id it is the drag l2 now if i go to this one you can see that it's a different name drag r drag r3 and then if i'm taking this particular screen you can see that or this particular element it is drag r1 so what the concept here is that if i go here you can see this is actually called as a drop l1 now if i come back to this yes here you can see sorry here you can see drop l1 so this is left hand side right so the naming convention is very a uh, very interesting i would say you can see that this is my left element right and it's a drop zone so you can see the drop l1 now if i come back here you can see the name is drop c1 because it is center aligned now this should be right aligned and you can see drop r1 so the same thing for all these nine destinations or the target there are nine different uh, what do you call drop uh, draggable elements like if you see this is my center one right you can see c1 the same thing if i go here this is my draggable draggable element hyphen c1 now what i'm going to do here definitely i don't want to really take all these nine options and put it here into this test case that web element uh, one web element two like this nine and then for target another nine so 18 elements that i need to identify and then i need to call this swipe uh, this drag and drop gesture that many times so, so for this actually what i'm going to do i will be creating an error list okay which would hold all the draggable elements as my source element and then there would be another array list which would hold all these nine drop elements 
and then I will be looping so that I don't really need to loop it. Uh, sorry, I don't need, really need to repeat all these things. Now, if you're not understanding, I will be quickly implementing those options. So for this, what I'm going to do, I will come back to this iOS drag and drop and I will tell you here, eventually I need to call this particular method, right? If you remember drag and drop and here this accepts two different elements, source and target, right? So this is what we are going to do. Now I will be creating an utility method so that whenever you want to implement in your framework, you can quickly reuse my method, which I'm implementing. So for this, what I'm going to do, I will be creating a method actually, probably that method would be static. Okay. And then as I told error list, now why am I taking an error list? So error list is kind of a, uh, a particular list which would maintain the order of insertion the way that i'm inserting the same way it would read the content actually so it would easy for me for one of this source element i can direct the destination element okay like let me show you that quickly so and if you see that you can see i have taken an array list the name is target items so this should be source items actually source items which is holding all the nine objects if you see these things now here you can see drag l1 l2 l3 and then after that c1 c2 c3 then r1 r2 r3 that's how all these nine elements right so the same thing i will be now this is a return right so i will take this return source items now the same thing i will be doing for my target elements as well so let me copy paste that okay and here you can see drop l1 now you can see that i'm maintaining the same order actually target items and here you can see drop l1 now when i'm taking this loop right at that moment the first element should be drag l1 to drop l1 that's how it will be fitting to these destinations like for an instance let's say this one right this is my drop l1 actually now what is the drag l1 this is now if i'm taking here then only it will fit it. If I'm taking this one, let's say to a different one, it won't set there because manually I have tested and I understood. Now I'm automating that. That's why I'm taking all these uh, order actually, respecting the order. So I'm keeping here. Now all these things are string actually. I need to convert that into an web element. For that, I need to quickly write another method. I would say that get element and under this i will be sending this string actually means individual items while i'm passing into this particular drag and drop right i won't be taking individual string rather than i will comp i will locate these elements and send the web element here so for this i will say return and we have already written this app driver right dot accessibility now if you see all these strings are what actually these are individual accessibility ids right in our rpm inspector we have already seen like if i'm just keeping here you can see these are all accessibility ids now if i want to convert this particular accessibility id into a web element i need to perform this one so i'm simply returning so whenever i'm calling this get element and passing this individual accessibility id it should return me the individual web element which i can pass it and here i will give a colon semicolon fine now i have written this these are my test data or the locators this is my get element now my job is to loop these two things these two array and then convert them one by one the source and destination into an element and pass it into this drag and drop that's it the concept here is only interesting or you need to make sure is that the order of this need to make sure means for drag l1 there has to be a drop l1 for drag r2 there has to be a drop r2 that's why i'm taking this error list so you have to utilize you cannot simply take hash map or list or something you have to understand the java concepts here okay fine now i need to loop right now here i cannot use the advanced for loop why because if i'm taking the advanced for loop like uh, for web element element of this particular 
uh, what do you call string or array string then i can only deal with one kind of looping but here i need to deal with two different arrays so that's why i'll tell you actually why am i taking you will understand eventually so less than and now here I'm simply calling any one of this get source items dot size. Now, why am I taking one? Just to make sure that how many times I need to loop it. Now, the source and destination element should be same, right? So I am taking that as my one. Call this particular drag and drop method inside this. I need to convert individual string into an element. How do I do that? So as simple as that, what I'm going to do here, I will be taking this particular inside this, right? I will be calling this get element here. Now get element accepts a particular item, right? And first of this is what actually you need to take the source means first I'm taking the source items get of i because this is my array list right so individual elements how can i get it i will be putting a get method which is java inside that i will be putting get i now let's evaluate one by one now this inside method get source of items dot get of i will return me individual items from this loop and that individual item i am taking to this get element to convert that into web element which can be understood by this drag and drop and now here the same concept i will be implementing for my target as well so here get target of list get target list i think i have uh, okay this has to be get target items just a naming convention nothing else so here i will take get target items dot get of i here and I need to delete the rest of these things one is for this one one is for this one and the rest to be one okay fine now you can see that uh, individual items I'm sending inside that particular drag and drop that's it now for stability purpose I will be putting as a thread dot sleep maybe let's say 500 millisecond i'm using so every time it will drag and drop to the location it will wait for half a second and then it will perform the another set so that's how i'm doing it and after that maybe i will wait for four seconds for you to see that entire robot is now the puzzle is now solved and then i'm making app driver dot get driver dot quit okay now i'm calling actually drag and drop which is actually if you see that this drag and drop is in a internally inheriting the swipe method actually which we have extensively discussed in our android drag and drop session so you can watch into that before uh, understanding this concept now without wasting time now let's run this concept and try to see if this is really working fine or not so my ipm server is running here and the application is here I will be going into the home screen, killing this application and let me close my inspector. Okay, fine. Now let's run this test and here open side by side. And you can see now it should go and click on the drag and one by one it should go. The order I have created the list items it is going into the same order only. Perfect. And you can see that uh, the puzzle is solved and then the application is now working fine. So you can test and now there is a congratulation message is coming, right? Maybe you can assert it after your for loop is done. If there is any issue or any web element is not identified, or maybe if there is a code change, which might not relating the proper one, because your expectation is that this particular item should go here. Let's say it is not implemented in the same way, or there is any issue that happened in your next release that got uh, like uh, missed actually so probably when you are running this test you may not get the congratulations message and you can identify if your app is working fine or not and as you can see here actually whatever the scenarios that so far we are automating the drag and drop method whether it is from our w3ic action which we did or maybe from gesture now from gesture also you can use it now what you can do simply instead of this call right you can say underscore gesture 
it should work as usual you can give it a try that's how we have written our utility method irrespective of any application source and destination it takes and does its job the same method you can also use for your cross platform for android and ios so that's pretty much it for today hope this session is useful please do subscribe to this youtube channel if you haven't thank you for watching